very special web show today. We have two very special guests, Bob Lindemeyer and Barry Boswick, here to talk about a new documentary that is being added to the Life After Movies family, Life After Megaforce. So excited about this one. This one is directed by Bob. You might remember him from Life After Flash. He was also the creative genius behind our other posters and our opening titles and our Blu-ray artwork for our other documentaries. Um, but this time we have Bob talking about his new documentary starring the one and only Barry Boswick. Welcome both of you. Uh, let's start by asking what is Life After Megaforce all about? Oh, well, Barry can answer this one because it'll be a soundbite. Oh. <laughs> What's it all about? Uh, it's probably going to be about 120 minutes. How, how, how long is it going to be, Bob? I'm aiming to have it the same length as the actual film, which I think is like 100, 108 minutes. 108 minutes. That's my goal. Well, no, what it's about is a very human story, and it's, and it's a story of, uh, uh, of good guys, bad guys. You know, there's a line in the movie, uh, the good guys always win even in the 80s. And I believe that this is uh, going to say the good guys always win, even in 2027, when it's finally released. <laughs> so how did you both connect in the first place? Uh, I, I woke up one morning and he was camped out on my front doorstep with, uh, you know, with his uh, Megaforce outfit on and uh, saying that he wanted to be part of Megaforce. And I, uh, I, I let him in, which was the first mistake, and, uh, and, and, and I inducted him into the Megaforce clan or cult. We like to call it a cult because there's so few people in it. I, I met him at my house. I mean, this is true, right? I mean, you, you did come to my house in California when we were doing a, uh, uh, what is it, a riff track uh, thing. And you did? Did you volunteer to come and do that uh, because you just wanted to get my autograph? I didn't have any designs on making a documentary at that point. I just had designs on being able to meet you. Like the Megaforce Rift Tracks was offered by our friends as a Kickstarter perk, and basically, if you paid them two hundred dollars for them to finish their film that Barry was in, Barry would be forced to do a live commentary of the entire movie. Uh, and I was the only guy who paid. You paid? You paid $200? Yeah, I was just a fan. And I collect a lot of movie props and stuff and ended up with one of the Mega Destroyers as a, I got it from a junkyard and basically restored it. And there's a great Megaforce fan page on, on Facebook that of course I joined and then became one of the administrators on. And I was just pretty much perfectly happy like celebrating Megaforce that way. And then, of course, I met Barry, which was just kind of a, a fan mission. It, it still wasn't about the documentary at all. And we got along well, I thought, fun day. And then, of course, through working with you, Lisa, the Life After Movies project just kind of inspired me to take a crack at it, right? Like, I, like I know the guy now, and I've got some of the stuff. So let's see. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Barry. What was it about Bob and his pitch that made you say yes to Life After Megaforce? Regretfully, I said yes uh, at the time when he brought up the idea, uh, not knowing that it was going to be a three-year, uh, you know, battle. Um, but what attracted me to him in the first place was... Um, the fact that he was uh, smarter than your average fan was uh, very knowledgeable about this whole Megaforce uh, debacle. And he was genuinely, um, I think, moved by the film way back when he was a child. And, uh, and, and uh, that, was, uh, that was very moving to me that here was somebody who some little thing I did years ago actually had an effect on a real human being in a way uh, filled their life with something that they didn't have before megaforce and then i filled his life with uh a good humor and uh, sarcasm and uh i uh, i followed him around the world uh trying to uh get him to leave me alone <laughs> 
I tell you, this guy, he was so insistent. He just never gave up either convincing me to do something silly or to go somewhere where he was finding some prop or something that he wanted to add to his collection. And uh, I uh, and I went along for the ride, uh, obviously, because I had nothing else to do for those three years other than to uh, follow him around as he indulged himself in his fantasy world of, of Megaforce. That's right. That's right. Like, I remember during the DVD commentary, the initial time we met, and that's really when the kernel of the idea started. Because when we started the film, you know, Barry was on the hook to make fun of the movie. And I came in uh, super passionate and like a real true believer, right? In, uh, in what they were attempting and the spirit of what they were attempting. And I just, I, I knew I had Barry when about halfway through the movie. And I mean, there is actual audio of this where he's kind of like, you know, yeah, like, like he got it. He got what I got about the film uh and then i kind of knew like he was on the hook and by the end of the night i was making him wear a blue headband and like it was amazing oh well it was so embarrassing that that first meeting my god and then you then you took pictures you actually took pictures of me you know wearing headbands and jackets and and all of that sort of stuff and you and you had a sense of humor about it. You weren't, you know, and that's what I loved about it. We 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 had a we were we had a similar sense of humor about life in general, but a, a serious um, uh, inquisition about this whole megaforce phenomenon that you were exploring and I was trying to forget. Barry, what was it like working with Bob as a first time director? I, I think he. Uh, I think once he got the right equipment, you know, and figured out how to work the microphones and uh, the cameras, and uh, uh, he, uh, I think it was a real learning experience for him. And uh, and by the time we hit the desert at the end, my God, he had a full crew and cameras, and and uh, and he had talked every one of his friends into doing it for nothing, and that to me is a true producer and director, you know, is when you can make something like this uh, work um, and convince people that your vision is uh, worth their time and energy. And uh, uh, he, is, uh, he is an entrepreneur, producer, director, who um, always uh, was humble and, uh, and listened to any advice I might have given him about his sometime bad acting, and uh, but then, but I had, but who, who am I to say? You have to bring up the acting. Uh, yeah, who am I to say what bad acting is when some of the acting in this movie for me is some of the worst acting I've ever done? So therefore, it you know, it I was able to sort of make up for uh, lost time and uh, uh, by uh, by and and therefore it it also encouraged our relationship uh from a film in the film you know where uh i was uh teasing him an awful lot and uh uh you know and tell him telling him he didn't know what he was doing when in reality he did know what he was doing uh and uh and, and that's one of the things I, I really was appreciating about him. But let's, let's talk about the future here, Bob. Right. Bob, what, what would, if you had to envision another documentary coming out of your soul, what would it be? Uh, <clears throat> the only other thing I, I, you know, this one has been so hard. I've kind of questioned you know, starting it, I was like, oh, I can make lots of documentaries about things that interest me. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure anymore, honestly, you know, if, if I were to do one and, and this won't mean a lot to you, Barry, cause you don't watch movies. Uh, there was a movie in the, in the seventies called Ghana 60 seconds, which was kind of famous, uh, about a guy who takes a, a Mustang named Eleanor, like my daughter, which is interesting. 
not a coincidence. Uh, it's basically a 45 minute long car chase through downtown LA and they only use one car. There's no stunt cars. Bob, why Megaforce? What is it about this amazing 80s film that you wanted to do this documentary on? Well, there's a couple of things. At the time, I was 11 or 12. It was a big summer for movies. Blade Runner, The Road Warrior. And as a kid, those movies were marketed towards me. I wasn't really, like I knew I was supposed to like them and think they were cool. And obviously they were cool. I didn't quite get them because they were kind of batting above my maturity level at the time. And, uh, and that same summer, uh, Megaforce came out. And Megaforce hit me like right where I was at, right? Very clean, very clear, like good guys versus bad guys. Like Megaforce is just playground rules. It's like you and your buddies on the playground and your enemy's your friend and you run around. And it was basically a really great recess or play date hyper visualized on the screen. So to see our play patterns and our spirit like projected on the screen in like this massive spectacle, it was just playing with the best toys around with your best buddies. I'm sure the next question, so why the documentary kind of f feeds into that, uh, you know, like ultimately I just got really tired of people picking on it. A more cynical person could probably, you know, poke a lot of fun at it. Ultimately they're missing the point. Like it wasn't meant to be anything else, but what it was. And for any artist to actually make good on a, on their vision and, and what they were trying to say, right. Hal Needham wasn't trying to say anything different than what came out in that movie. Like, I think that should be celebrated or at least appreciated and, and definitely not, you know, disparaged or picked on, you know, and I'm not saying it's any Lawrence of Arabia or anything, you know, I'm not, I'm not deluded about that. But at the same time, like if you meet the film where it's at, it's equally as good and enjoyable. I don't know, it's honest. And as a 12 year old kid and as an over 50 year old who can remember when he was a kid, like I still, I still appreciate that. I mean, we talked a little bit about that with Flash Gordon too. It's a similar spirit of, of, of remembering. And there's a actual physical piece of artwork out there that you can watch and, and remember those times. And if you're lucky enough, you can become friends with the hero of your movie and make him play Megaforce with you when you're 53 years old. Hey, you know, Bob, you know what you have to learn the art of? Sound bites. Lisa, can I say something? This is this is what attracted me to Bob. I mean, he was so verbal and so passionate about uh, this experience in his life. And nobody had ever come up to me and said that before. And nobody had ever, you know, said how important this movie was. Uh, they, I had the same uh, sort of backwash that he had all of his life with people making fun of it and this and that. And I, and I made fun of it. Uh, uh, um, but all of a sudden, here's somebody with a genuine feeling for something that I, you know, did. And um, uh, and how could you how could you not love this man? for that kind of sincerity. So Barry, before Bob came into your life for the documentary, what did you think about Megaforce? What was your opinion on the film? How did you feel fans felt about it? Uh, my, I, I, I was, uh, my opinion was disappointment in a way. I just, I, I when I was making it, thought it was uh, better than I think it actually was. And I had a thought that I was better in it than in a way I was. And uh, uh, I, I cringe at some of it uh, because uh, uh, I had just come off the stage uh, doing the Pirates of Penzance, uh, and I'm uh, and I, I they wanted me to play this part because of this pirate king aspect that I had uh, in my head and in my body at that time, and. Uh, I, when I watched the movie, I didn't, I don't think I toned it down enough for film. I was still giving a very theatrical performance. And, um, and in a way it sort of went along, I suspect with the tone and size of the movie, 
Uh, but uh, personally, I, um, I, I, didn't, uh, I, I didn't think it was my best work. Um, but, uh, and also, th- I was disappointed in that it wasn't, that they didn't make a sequel to it, because I had a two or three picture deal, as Bob will tell you. But, you know, by, but doing Megaforce was such a fun thing because we are working with big pieces of equipment, large amounts of, of vehicles, you know, uh, uh, real army and air force guys or wherever they were from. Uh, and, uh, and it was a big budget movie. And, and I, um, and everybody that they cast in it, I thought was wonderful. Uh, and not that I ever talked to any of them, but they were really good in the final analysis. And um, uh, so I, I had really mixed feelings about it. But ultimately, I did the film. It wasn't successful. And I went on with my life. And then this guy named Bob comes into my life to remind me of this time in my uh, in my career, and uh, it refreshed uh, a lot of good and and uh, faulty memories uh, of of Megaforce, and um, and then he told me everything that I should have remembered about Megaforce, uh, and uh, and told me what a good time I had, and uh, told me how good I was in it. Has doing this documentary with Bob actually changed how you feel about Megaforce? I how I feel about Megaforce now is that uh, there it actually uh, uh, meant something, and uh, as opposed to just a sort of cheesy entertainment, uh, and uh, because uh, Bob uh, isn't f- what I've realized and, and discovered, isn't the only person who has uh, been affected by this. Um, I've. I do conventions uh, during the year, you know, sort of Comic-Con kind of things. And people come up to me, uh, guys, uh, mostly guys, but some women, and they say it was meaningful because I went to it with my father and my my memory of Megaforce was always uh, coordinated and uh, connected to my memories and uh, feelings for my father, because maybe they didn't, some of them didn't have a great relationship and that was what they could share was this one movie that, uh, uh, you know, as Bob had said earlier, is good guys, bad guys, very clean, very uh, uh, acceptable kind of uh, entertainment. And, um, I think uh, because I've re-examined this whole thing with Bob over the years and more people have come out of the woodwork to tell me similar stories, uh, I, I now think that it's, um, it wasn't just a total waste of time. <laughs> did you think it was at some point? Oh, I think after, yeah, after I did it and I'd spent the money, the little money that they gave me, I, I probably uh, I just forgot about it and um, uh, and and lived in my uh, in my the darkness of my uh, humiliation um, uh, for it and uh, and so did you get kicked on by your peers for being in Megaforce? I, I have no peers. <laughs> I have there's no peers here. Uh, no, uh, uh, no, uh, I. Uh, no, I mean, I think at the time I made it, you know, it was it was it was a big deal. I mean, uh, to be cast as the lead in this in this big movie, I, I'm sure uh, a lot of other actors uh, tried out for it and uh, didn't get it, and a lot of actors turned it down. I was probably the seventh or eighth person who, uh, you know, who was uh, asked uh, to do this. Um, Bob, you can probably tell me. All of the actors who said, well, this is a pile of crap and I am not going to do it. And so they would turn it down when they were you know, presented the script. And I obviously didn't know any better and or I needed the job uh, in 1980. What? Three, two, one, one. Yeah. So I was I was just doing a lot of stage things and uh, uh, and I thought it was an opportunity to. Um, you know, hit the big time.
Well, and there was, and there was no, I mean, right. That was Hal Needham's fourth or fifth movie. And every single one of his movies was a massive hit. Like there was no, with the people involved, there was no reason to think that it wasn't going to be very successful. No, 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 that's true. And I think it was, it was a calculated risk. Actually, it was no risk at all. It was just a nice job I did. And, uh, uh, I, I probably didn't have anything else at the time. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, put me in a, in a jumpsuit and take me out in the middle of the desert, you know, uh, that's a good uh, idea. Oh, we've already done that. I think a couple of times you, Bob and I, uh, so what are your plans for release? Do you have a release date? Do you have a timeline, any dates that you can share with people? So this coming year, uh, is the 40th anniversary of Megaforce. And uh, it seems appropriate to, you know, since our film is such a celebration of it and hopefully um, with the 40th anniversary, there'll be uh, more opportunities on a lot of different channels and internet sites or DVD re-releases uh, for people to rediscover the movie because uh, you know, that's one of the main goal, the initial goals of making this documentary was, uh, you know, take another look, and maybe not be so jaded about it. And I think you'll find something that uh, you'll be entertained by, um, you know, and that's not uh, like that shouldn't be a dirty word. Just being able to go to a movie theater and have a good time with your dad or your son and uh, and come out and go, man, that was super bitching. Uh, mega cool. Uh, like, I think that's, I think that's more than fair. I don't, I don't think everything has to be about, um, you know, drama and deep relationships. Uh, the irony of course is my documentary has turned into a very deep relationship with, uh, my friend and mentor, uh, Barry Boswick. What have I taught you during this process? What have you learned about life from Ace Hunter, your your hero? Well, what I learned from Ace, Ace Hunter is not to invite girls to do cool stuff. Uh, but what I learned from Barry Boswick um, is, um, you know, so I, Barry is my senior by a little bit. And, you know, uh, when we're not filming stuff and we're just hanging out, there's a, this is going to be one of those long ones again. Well, cut it short, cut, go right to the heart of it. Just watching the way like Barry takes things in stride, especially with the ridiculousness of this project and just always, always in it to win it, always happy, always kind of rolling with things. And he has a real, he has a real curiosity about like everything that I've seen. Like every time I've hung out with him, he's just taking it in and like experiencing it. And really uh, like there's a presence about him. And when you're around him, uh, you feel that way too, that uh, yeah. Like I really aspire to be more like that, like genuinely. Like, oh, that's, that's what, that's wonderful. Well, thank you for that. I, I had no idea that I had any influence on your actual real life at all. I mean, I know that making this documentary filled up some, some, a lot of your creative energy and, and stuff. And uh, you traveled all over the country and maybe the world to interview the only people who are still alive uh, and, uh, and once you got past their initial reaction of, why are you doing this? Uh, you got to a, a lot of interesting uh, interviews. Yeah, a but lot of interesting stuff. You collected not only uh, things from Megaforce, you know, physical things, but I think you collected a lot of memories and um, uh, heart, you know, from your... Uh, exploration of uh, this part of your life for sure for sure well and, and i mean uh i would hope and i like i feel that uh you know it was the same for you 
right? Like as far as like our shared experience and some of the things that we've done and some of the people you've met through this, even if it's like reconnecting with, you know, Megaforce folks or meeting some of my friends or whatever, like it's been a real, you know, like our, our relationship is, I feel like it, it's just come so like naturally. Right. And I mean, honestly, it's hard for me to be making this film because like, I'd rather just turn off the camera and like hang out and like be real. Right. And, and it's been a real struggle especially the last year, it's like, oh my God, this would be amazing for the film. But this is like a real, uh, you know, a real interaction with a real human being. And we have mutual love and respect for each other. Like, like, I'm not going to pull it. Like, I can't pull out a camera during this, you know. Uh, But you did. You did. You, you, (laughs) well, you put a camera on everything. If it was only real. So you have a very, very impressive collection, Bob, as we know from Life After Flash. It goes beyond Megaforce. But how many original Megaforce vehicles do you actually have? Four and one on loan. So I've got two functional mega buggies and a functional motorcycle. And then uh, two crash dune buggies. And then uh, this bike, I don't know if you can see, uh, that's on loan from another Megaforce fan, uh, David, who loaned it to me for the uh, film. So I think as an outsider, what I feel is really special about this film is that, you know, the Life After series celebrate iconic films and the people who are part of it, but yours has felt like it's gone beyond that, where it's almost become more about this amazing relationship between the two of you. And I think that's really special because not only you'll appeal to Megaforce fans, but then that should connect with a wider audience who may not have even seen Megaforce at all. Well, Megaforce fans will be happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's a real bromance. It's a, it is a bromance for, for sure. And, uh, uh, and I, think, I, I, I think that's gonna be one of the takeaways. I think uh, when people finally see this is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it starts out as one thing and ends up uh, us announcing our marriage. Yeah, I mean, the funny thing about like doing life after Megaforce, right? Especially under, you know, after after your amazing films, it was just like, yeah, I, fu- I got the star. And like, he doesn't care. He doesn't remember, like, what am I going to do? Uh, and then, of course, it became, you know, me sharing my life after Megaforce uh, with Barry. The trick, the trick is how do you market it so it, you don't just get the Megaforce fan, but you get people who, you know, are, are are just want this sort of, as I said, bromance kind of meaningful thing, which is couched in the Megaforce world. Um, yeah. I, I think that's the challenge here is, uh, but I think it's, that's going to take, that's going to take the, 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 the documentary being seen, exposed to uh, critics and, and bloggers and, and uh, all those kinds of people who are surprised by its content and, uh, and its feeling, you know. Is this the part when you say, when I get it done? I think I've already said that enough. Okay. I think I think you got the point. You had to both surmise Megaforce and Life After Megaforce in one sentence. What would it be? I would say what uh, Cisco and Ebert said about about my movie and uh, and Megaforce, where uh, you know the director doesn't have a have a clear sense of it. There's lots of motorcycles running around the desert exploding and and good guys and bad guys and uh and it's just supposed it's just supposed to be fun right like you know uh bearing and i's movie and your movie for that matter lisa since your name's gonna be on it too you know uh you know in in a weird way like my movie is, is just like Megaforce, right? Uh, it's a buddy, it's a buddy movie, and they go off and like do battle, um, and nobody dies. <laughs> There's no bloodshed, uh, and you come away feeling, 
you know, good and hopefully inspired and, uh, and hopefully want to go back and watch Megaforce. Cause I do, obviously I'm not getting paid by any Megaforce people, but, uh, yeah, it needs a second look again, man. I am terrible at the one-liners. Uh, cause I just went on and on again. I really did. What what was the question? I I I I lost it. It was a half hour ago when you when you asked it. Life after Megaforce uh, means that there is um, life currently happening with men who. So I think Megaforce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, this is a tough one because it 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 um because the film's not about megaphors really you know i mean it, yeah sure it's about but it's about people who make movies and it's about people who love movies and it is about people and a person who doesn't remember making a movie i got one I, I think I got it. I think you're onto something here. So, uh, Megaforce, uh, for you was completely forgettable and nobody cared about that. Megaforce for me was my favorite movie of the summer and nobody cared about that. Jump to 40 years later and what you didn't get from making Megaforce, which is the relationships and something you actually remember and a spirit of connection. Um, you know, you're getting that through life after Megaforce now with our friendship and the relationships that, and adventures we've had, right? Like you're going to remember this one, right? You're not, <laughs> you know, and, and for me, it's about finally being able to share a movie that was so cool to me with my friends and my peers and you know the way uh i wish it was received back then like i finally get to have that moment where like everybody is excited about megaforce and we're megaforcing together and we're and we're celebrating the movie and, and that was something that i didn't get in the past i think you're also gonna say, i think you're also gonna say when this is out i told you so <laughs> I told you so. I told you so that this movie meant more and, and and was interesting and entertaining and uh is is about a more universal um a theme and a theme that is simple and any 12-year-old or 70-year-old could understand and be entertained by. Yeah, you have to like Check your cynicism at the door, right? Yeah, well, um, basically that's what it's about. I, uh, I'm, I'm an over seventy year old, and you're still a twelve year old. <laughs> you know, and and I think that's the appeal uh, uh, of it. You know, in a way, I'm. Uh, that's all I have to say. <laughs> I, in fact, tonight, uh, tonight, I'm going to show the movie to my wife for the first time. Are you really? She's never seen it, and so I thought, "What? This is a perfect time for it tonight." You think? Think I could interview her? Sure. Yeah. 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 Sure. Maybe I should come there and like watch it with you guys. You better hurry up. It's uh, <laughs> five after six here. I would say it's just pure entertainment, and I would say it's something that will surprise you. Because it's not just about oh here they made a they made a, a movie called Megaforce and here's everybody who was involved in it, I mean it really is something unique and uh, and I think when it's done, if it's ever done, uh, that that will be that will be a lot of the critic of, of the critics will say oh my God I was just expecting another you know, documentary about the making of Godfather or something, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, if he does his job right, Bob, uh, uh, he's got something uh, very special here. And, um, uh, I, and I might actually watch it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something. Yeah, maybe in another 20 years, somebody 
you'll meet somebody who'll force you to watch my movie and uh, like I did Megaforce. But you know what? I've I have seen I have seen all the footage that you've sent me, and it's all really wonderful. You know, it's all really uh, uh, meaningful and special and um, uh, well thought out and uh, funny uh, because it has. Uh, I think it has the combination of yours and my sense of humor, which is, uh, you know, maybe not everybody's taste. So therefore. <laughs> Therefore, the, the documentary will probably get as many people watching it as the people who actually watched the original movie. That'd be like 70, then. 70? I, I, we're, we're hitting over 80 now, right? I hope so, yeah. It might allow Bob to uh, buy another uh, Megaforce motorcycle or something that he can junk up his garage in and, uh, you know, and, and test his marriage. Yeah, no, we're just going to go on the Comic Con circuit after this. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to be your your booth assistant uh, for my retirement. It's going to be amazing. So on that note, thank you both so much for chatting today. I literally could talk about Megaforce all day. No, we can't. We can't talk about it all day. <laughs> this is about all it gets. So I'm so, so, so excited that we can finally talk about life after Megaforce. I know, Bob, you've been working on this for a few years now uh, as is common with the life after movies um but so excited that we can share it celebrate it there's a card up above for anyone who wants to watch the trailer thank you both again so much for joining me it has been an absolute pleasure thank you i i i've, I've looked i've looked forward to this and uh, i'm thank you for being as involved in this as you are and for championing uh a, a bob's indulgences well, thank you for being them also, Barry. So, yeah, without you guys, uh, I'd still be here in the backyard with these dune buggies by myself. We're also hoping that this that this documentary is successful so he can sell that crap behind him for a good price. Right, Bob? That's right, because I know you're keeping track of your hours. So, <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. 